Amen. All right. Well, hey, we're going to start off tonight with a very thought-provoking video, Mario. Are you ready for this one? Okay, and as we watch this, all i got to say is a little disclaimer. I really hope and pray that this is nobody here nor their relatives. But let's take a look at this uh, thought-provoking video. Let's start off. brother the big bang theory just another reason for why it pays to be separated from the foolishness of this world hey give it up for bobby has he come a long way since he's come to know christ as his savior awesome bobby that wasn't an m80 by the way just a regular firecracker but uh, but uh, seriously folks if that was you or bobby and he was related to you but uh, if that was really your son who was actually doing that who actually listen believe that blowing up firecrackers uh, randomly, uh, even putting firecrackers in the apple, that somehow, some way, it would eventually produce a baby's brother. If that was your son, how many guys honestly would go right back into the house and point to your spouse and say, they take after your side of the family? You know what I'm saying? Okay. But here's the point, folks. I mean, isn't that exactly what evolution teaches? Do they not actually say that a random firecracker, oh, by the way, the ran- where'd those firecrackers come from? Just out of thin air? Somebody had to keep producing them, right? But evolution uh, teaches that a random firecracker called the Big Bang blew up and everything's here, including baby brothers. As goofy as that video is, that's the whole premise for evolution, okay? And it's not just uh, foolish in the practical realm. uh, It's dangerous, and it's a stumbling block in the spiritual realm. And let me give you just another example of that. Uh, This guy admits how much it was a stumbling block for him to come to Jesus Christ, okay? And this is what I think we don't understand sometimes as the church. He says this, Since the day I became a Christian, I have struggled with the differences in the theory of evolution versus Genesis that I was taught since when? Childhood. Now, when and where was he taught that? In school, okay, in the media, in the cartoons, everywhere, okay? And so he struggled with that. He says, Now, thank you, though, for showing me what? Not just biblically, but scientifically, how I don't need to reconcile these two anymore. It angers me how long and deeply I have been what? Duped, okay? But I can't worry about that now. I look forward to more study on the truth versus the propaganda that I was fed. As we saw, that's exactly what it is. It's not based on science, evolution. It's propaganda. And the reason why, by and large, I believe most people, even kids or adults, believe in evolution is because you repeat a lie loud enough, long enough, often enough, what happens? It's propaganda. People start uh, to believe it, okay? And uh, what you can see, though, is when you take a look at it, this creation versus evolution thing is not only a great way to share the gospel, but even as that Christian said, it encourages us in our what? In our faith, in our walk with Jesus. And so that's why we're going to continue our study, taking a look at God's witness of his creation. And again, the premise is we're taking a look at different evidences that God's left behind for us to show us he's not just real, but we really can have a beautiful, loving, intimate, personal relationship with him uh, through Jesus Christ. Amen? Anybody excited about having a relationship with God? Okay, praise God, okay? Uh, I mean, it'd be one thing if he just existed, uh, but you, you couldn't connect with him, but we can have a relationship with him, and that's why he's given us this evidence. Now, we've already seen that first evidence was the evidence of intelligent design, We dealt with that for 10 weeks, or intelligent creation. The last time we saw the second evidence was the evidence of a young creation, okay? We have not been here for millions and billions of years, okay? We have been here only for a few thousand years, around 6,000 years, just like Jesus said. And we saw the first evidence of that was the evidence from space, okay? And that was the evidence of star clusters, supernovas, comets, the amount of hydrogen, planets, rings, the cooling of the planets, the appearance of Venus, uh, Mars, solar winds, size of the uh, sun, the isotopes, the distance of the moon, and even starlight. As we learned there that uh, the uh, speed of light has not always been constant, okay? And uh, so you can't use that as an argument that, no, we know we've been here for millions of years because it takes billions of years for the star. No, the speed of light is not a constant. 
In fact, it's already been demonstrated. It can be completely stopped. It can be completely sped up. And most likely, obviously, God had that thing flying super fast when he said, let there be light. Okay, no problem to answer that objection. But that's all the second evidence showing us we really do have a young creation. Now, again, if you weren't here last week, we saw the premise of that, just one text, and we'll look at others, Lord willing, but was the text there from Jesus, okay? And uh, he said that the uh, beginning, the first marriage between Adam and Eve was the beginning. So Jesus sets the standard for us. How long have we been here? Okay, Adam and Eve is the beginning point of creation, right? And if you add up the dates in the Bible, you get to roughly about 6,000 years. So Jesus says we haven't been here for millions and billions of years. And that's the problem we've been seeing. Evolution doesn't teach that, do they? And so what does that in essence do? You're calling Jesus a liar, okay? But we're going to take a look at some more evidence, not just from uh, the space. We're going to take a look at the evidences now from the earth itself, showing us we have not been here for millions and billions of years. But let's start off with reminding ourselves, where in the world did the earth come from? Open your Bibles to Isaiah 40, okay? Isaiah chapter 40, verses 21 through 28. Isaiah, of course, was written by Isaiah. And uh, let's take a look there. Isaiah chapter 40. And we're going to take a look there. There's some verses in the context there, obviously, is uh, God. And uh, uh, Israel is kind of like freaking out. God, where are you in all my troubles and stuff? Good thing we never do that, Right? And so uh, he kind of reminds them, hey, listen, I think you can trust me. I know what I'm doing. And, of course, he goes into how powerful he is and who he is and what he's done, which includes created everything, okay? And so let's take a look there, Isaiah chapter 40, okay? Verse 21, and, and, and God speaking, he says this, hey, hey, do you not know? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood since the earth was founded? He, God, sits enthroned above the what? Circle of the earth. So what has the Bible always taught about the earth, the shape of it? Round, not flat. As people would say, the Bible, you can't trust it. It teaches the Bible. No, the Bible does not teach that the earth is flat. Read the Bible. It's always been correctly uh, as a circle, as round, okay? And as people are like grasshoppers, he, God, stretches out the heavens like a canopy. And he spreads them out like a tent to live in. He brings princes to naught and reduces the rulers of this world to nothing. No sooner are they planted, no sooner are they sown, no sooner do they take root in the ground, and he, God, blows on them, and they wither. And a whirlwind sweeps them away like chaff. To whom will you compare me, God says. I mean, I created all this stuff, excuse me. Uh, Who is my equal, says the Holy One. Lift your eyes and look where? You want to see his power? You want to see his majesty? You want, to, you, want to, you want to have a right comparison when the world comes against you, even the leaders of the world, and they want to mock God and mock Jesus Christ in comparison to God? Excuse me, who do you guys think you are? Look up to the heavens, and God created all that. He's above and beyond all that. Excuse me? What are you worried about? Who created all these, he says? Who, who brings out the starry hosts one by one and calls them each by name? Because of his great power and mighty strength, not one of them is missing. And he says this, why do you say, O Jacob, and complain, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord. My cause is disregarded by God. He he forgot all about me. He doesn't know what he's doing. Excuse me? And that's what he says. He says, do you not know? Hello, McFly, right? Chrome translation. Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the what? The creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary in his understanding. No one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increase the power of the weak and even the youth grow tired and weary and it goes on to the classic passage that uh, you will what? Soar like wings of eagles and we quote that and sing that all the time. But the context there is what's going on there is he's encouraging us, don't worry, don't freak out. Have you already forgotten? God is the one who created everything so what are you worried about, right? He'll take care of you. He knows what he's doing. He'll give you supernatural strength, right? And that's what we see here. But it also teaches us clearly in this text that when it came to the earth, who in the world made it and everything in it to the ends of the earth? It was God. And that's what he says. Do you not know this? Are are you serious? Have you not heard this news that God is the one who's responsible for our planet? Okay. And again, this is the problem. Evolution apparently has not heard and does not know. But we do know that they do not want to know and they do not want to hear. Right? As we saw many times before, they don't want to deal with the facts, okay? And, but what evolution says is we did not come from a heavenly father, the creator of the ends of the earth. They believe, just like that video, that we all came from a mythical firecracker called the Big Bang. 
right? And that's a serious problem. And as we saw last week, that's not what the Bible teaches. That's not what God says. That's not what Jesus says. That's not what Colossians says when Jesus is the creator of all things, right? And he did it a few thousand years ago by his own words. So again, this is calling Jesus Christ a liar. And how many guys would say it's probably not a good thing to do? Okay. And again, what we've been seeing is evolution says just the opposite. They not only try to do away with God's existence, but then they want to go to the complete other uh, end of the spectrum and say, oh, no, 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 we haven't been here for just a few thousand years. We've been here for millions and billions of years in a land far, far away. Something mystical, something magical happened and out came a baby brother. Right? Isn't that what they teach? It's called a fairy tale we saw last time. Okay? And you might be thinking out there, well, okay, maybe they got the universe, the dating of that wrong. And uh, they got the space uh, dating that wrong too, as we saw last week. But, uh, I mean, surely when it comes to the earth itself, I mean, we live here. How many guys live on planet earth? Those of you who didn't raise your hand, you're freaking me out right now. But I'll pray for you. But, <laughs> right? Okay, but, but here on earth, I mean, we're here. So, so surely, I mean, I can see if you can get Saturn wrong or the solar system wrong because we haven't been there lately. Okay, uh, but we live here on earth, so surely they've got this timing of the earth down to an exact science. They know what they're talking about. It's not a fairy tale making it up, is it? Well, that's right, Tom, the uh in the southern Hebrew there uh, gives it away. Let's take a look at their revolving dates of the earth, just like last week we saw at the universe. They're, they're, they're making it up as they go. Let's take a look at just a few of those examples. Now, let's start off with the biblical starting point, according to Jesus we saw last week, but also 1650, uh, Bishop James Usher calculated a creation day of Sunday, October 23rd, 4000 BC, about 6,000 years ago. Now, again, I don't think you can get necessarily that exact, okay, but roughly that's about what you get if you add up the dates uh, in the Bible. But in 1862, post-Darwinian influence, <clears throat> they said, oh, no, 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 20 million. Now, notice it's not anywhere close to a billion. It's just 20 million, okay? Uh, 1897, it went to 40 million, okay? Uh, 1899, it was 90 million. Now, is anybody starting to feel old? In two years, we went up 50 million years. I'm tired. Let's go home. I'm going to take a nap. But anyway, that's right. <laughs> but, uh, no, 1921. Look, look at that's a big jump, right? One billion. It's the roaring 20s. Things were happening. You might as well just crank up the edge of the earth while you're at it. And inflation and whatever. Uh, 1932 is 1.6 billion years old. The earth was, they believe. Uh, 1947, 3.35 billion. That's a pretty big jump. But again, after the war, you had the inflation. The economy wasn't doing too well. So you can understand that. Uh, it affected everything, apparently. 1956, 4.5 billion uh, years uh, old. And then the current one is roughly about 4.54 billion. Although <laughs> today I came across another one. No, it's about 4. Uh, five and it's getting a little bit higher so who knows i don't know maybe it depends on the way the wind blows i don't know but that's currently where it seems to be landing at least for now okay but uh, don't bank uh, your life on it, okay but anyway how many guys would say that that's not a very stable timetable okay the bible has been around okay the new testament for about two thousand years did you know the bible is still saying the same thing about six thousand years ago okay but these guys man they crank it up uh, millions and billions of years just over a few years okay and uh but again let's move on now from this unstable timetable that's just the tip of the iceberg they, i'm telling you folks they're making this up as they go to fit their preconceived idea including their false theory called evolution they're making it fit because remember what's the, the premise these guys in order for evolution to work you don't have to ignore the evidence of intelligent design you have to have millions and billions of years for their evolutionary fairy tale to work right we never see the evidence today there is no examples today it never happens before our eyes today so that becomes the hero of the plot we saw last week Mi oh but okay we don't see it now but millions of years ago surely it happened well first of all robert that's right but stop calling me surely you're scaring me Okay, but, uh, but uh, that's why they need and they continue to push for these millions of years, okay? But let's take a look at some more scientific facts, not only from the space we saw and the universe last week, now let's take a look at some of the evidence from the Earth. There's no way, folks, we've been here that long, even on our home planet. Okay, let's take a look at that evidence. First of all, meteor dust. Micrometeors, or meteor dust, is composed of iron, nickel, and silicate compounds, and is continually entering our atmosphere, okay? In fact, it's been measured that they are adding 25 tons to Earth daily, okay? Isn't that rough? That's pretty, you know, you guys ready to go on a diet? Maybe that's what it is. We're uh, that's gaining weight. 
I just lost a pound. Let's go get some ice cream. <laughs> he goes, what? Blame it on the dust. But anyways, that's what's happening. Whether you see it or not, that's about how much is happening. So that's something you can pretty well measure. Now, here's the problem for the evolutionists. If the earth has been here for billions of years, okay, then the amount of nickel in the ocean would have been massively greater than what we measure it today. And the fact is, there's only enough meteor dust on earth to account for a few thousand years of meteor dust influx. Well, that's very interesting how that kind of works out. How about the Earth's helium? Nobel Prize medalist and physicist Melvin Cook found that helium-4 enters our atmosphere from solar wind and radioactive decay of uranium. How many of you guys are so glad that guy took on that project? Isn't that life-changing? Well, actually, it works out pretty good when you're looking at a young uh, Earth uh, because here's what happened. Uh, it presented a problem when he discovered this. You see, if the Earth has been here for billions of years, okay, our present atmosphere would contain about 1.4 parts per million of helium. But the facts show that the amount of helium-4 in our present-day atmosphere dates the Earth in less than 10,000 years, still within the biblical time frame. Very interesting. Okay, how about Earth's topsoil? Calculations have shown that it takes from 300 to 1,000 years to build up just one inch of topsoil. How many of you guys would like to have that job? Hi, right, Bobby, what do you do? I'm a professional dirt stare. Okay. Anyway, whatever. But anyway, somebody does it. Okay, it's a job somewhere. So that's how long it takes. We can measure that. Okay, by the way, here's the problem. The average depth of topsoil throughout the world is only about eight inches average, which means the earth can only be, do the math, a few thousand years old. Okay? It should be a whole lot higher if we've been here for millions and billions of years. How about earth's erosion? If the earth has been billions of years old and erosion has been going on for at least millions of years, stop and think about this. You know, erosion erodes things down, dirt, things of that nature, hills, eventually it goes away. Well, stop and think about it. If we've really been here for billions of years, how could there still be sharp cliffs on mountains? Sharp cliffs anywhere? In fact, how could there still be any mountains anywhere if we've really been here for billions of years? Think about it, folks. The very fact that you still see mountains surrounding Las Vegas and they have an all eroded flat should tell you something, okay? How come everything hasn't been washed away if the earth has been here constantly eroding for millions and billions of years? Okay, uh, the fact is the earth is, uh, if the earth has been here for billions of years, the ocean floor would be covered by sediments from the land erosion measuring 60 to 100 miles thick. Ruth, how many uh, would you say that that would have ruined your boat trip? Right, right, and John would have been cleaning that motor and the dirt and stuff, excuse me, okay. Uh, and all the continents would have been eroded away. Instead, we only find a few thousand feet of sediment declaring that the earth has only been here eroding for just a few thousand years. Well, that's kind of interesting. How about the ocean salt? Uh, today, roughly about 3.6% salt in the ocean. They're getting saltier every day from the water uh, containing mineral salts flowing off the continents into the oceans due to erosion, okay? Here's the problem. For those of you who want to believe that the earth is billions of years old, there's not enough salt in the ocean. There's only enough content for a few uh, thousand years. How about earth's oil and gas? When an oil or gas well is tapped, the contents will spray high into the sky uh, by pressures as great as 20,000 pounds per square inch. We call them a gusher, right? Okay, is what you see there. Now, here's the problem. The pressure in modern-day oil and natural gas fields is too high for them to be very old. The pressure should have long since bled off by now, but it hasn't. Why is that pressure still here if we've been here for millions and billions of years? And that was supposedly created millions and billions of years. Interesting. How many of you guys ever had a helium balloon? How many guys have sucked the air in that? Sound like a Martian, right? You used to do that, right? And, uh, but anyway, uh, but uh, how many guys, you had a helium balloon and you, you, you refrained from the temptation to suck that into your lungs and sound like a Martian. And you tried to keep that thing floating in the air as long as you could. But try as you might, you don't even touch it. You can even hide it in the closet, okay? After a couple of days, what happens? You, it, it automatically, it begins to bleed out, right? No matter what you try, it's gonna start. It's the same thing with that. These are, if you will, giant balloons underneath with high pressure with these oil pockets. Why are they still under high, immense pressure? If we've really been here for billions of years, why hasn't all the pressure bled out by right now? Why do they gush when you pop into them? Okay, and that's the other thing. Now, the fact of, about the matter is the pressure in these deep rock formations and their trapped oil shows us they cannot be older than just a few thousand years. And for those of you who uh, have been convinced or told that it takes millions of years to make oil, not long ago, uh, Jordan... Uh, comes to the rescue. Uh, Canada's environment minister at the time, Tom McMillan, they did a $196 million project to build a commercial plant which would use heat to turn a half million tons of 
sewage into uh, 700,000 barrels of oil, okay? So they're making sewage, trash, and they're uh, in this plant. And how long did it take them to take that sewage and turn it into oil? Here's how long the process took, 30 minutes. So with modern technology, with great high pressure and high heat, you can compress it and create oil in a matter of minutes. Hmm. So let me, let me we're getting ahead of ourselves. We'll eventually, Lord willing, get there with a worldwide flood. Um, if the world really was, and the Bible says it was, covered with water to the tops of the highest mountains at the time, okay, that would create a lot of pressure, right? And a lot of heat from that pressure with everything being submerged under that massive amount of water. In fact, all the soilage, all the, the, the carcasses, all the, the trees and the rotting mass of foliage underneath the water, you could squeeze that like sewage with that high heat and pressure and it would be buried and it would create pockets of oil all over the planet if, of course, there was a worldwide flood. Boy, that sounds like the Bible's got that right too. Very interesting. Okay, how about the Earth's magnetic field? The Earth's magnetic field has been measured since 1835 and it's growing weaker, which means it used to be stronger. How many guys can figure that out without any help tonight? Besides Mario. That's right. All right, now here's the problem for the evolutionists. If we go backwards, even just as recently as 20,000 years ago, the heat produced from the magnetic field would probably have liquefied the Earth and one million years ago, the magnetic field would have been so strong it would have vaporized the planet. Okay, and uh, so based on the magnetic field, we know the Earth still has to be quite young because you're here. How many guys have not been vaporized today? Once again, those of you who are not raising your hand, we need to pray for you. Uh, let's move on. The Earth spinning rate, all right? The Earth spinning rate is slowing down at a rate of one-third of a second every year, which means it used to be spinning faster. You guys are on the ball. All right, now here's the problem. If we extrapolate back billions of years ago, okay, the Earth would have been spinning so fast that centrifugal force would have pulled the land masses to the equator, drawn them out to a height of over 40 miles, and pushed the oceans to the poles. How many guys would say that would have messed up your Memorial Day plans? You would not have gotten to the barbecue, okay? And the overall shape of the Earth would have changed from a sphere to as flat as a pancake, okay, uh, as we see there. But, in fact, some feel that this might be another valid theory as to what happened to the dinosaurs. Remember, they don't want to listen to the biblical account that it was a worldwide flood. Oh, go figure. Okay, I don't want to do that. And they'll admit anything like back pains, constipation, anything that got dumb. You know, we saw those before. Okay, but maybe this is what happened to the dinosaurs if you think about it. Okay, apparently according to evolution, the earth got spinning so fast millions of years ago that the dinosaurs flew just right off. Watch. Pew. Joey, you just saw with your own eyes. Can you believe it? I mean, this is awesome. Wow, that's, that's, if, if they're going to make up a story in a fairy tale, I guess I get to make up one too. Yeah, and the sound effect too. I like that. <laughs> but again, what are we dealing with here? Not just the biblical account. We're dealing with what? Scientific data, scientific facts. And you take a look at the scientific facts, not just of the universe and the space, but now even the earth itself, where we live, by the way. And it kind of messes up their timeline, doesn't it? Okay, and remember, they have to have, this is the Achilles heel of evolution. They have to have millions and billions of years for their fairy tale to work, but it doesn't work, okay? It's a lie, okay? And again, remember, I, 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 I've said this before, but all it takes, folks, I don't have to rip off 10 examples. And by the way, there's a ton more. I don't have to rip off the examples I gave last week. It just takes one. And that should pause them to consider, wait a second, maybe we're wrong but they won't go down that route because they have to have millions and billions of years to pull off their lie. But you might be like uh, Joey up here on the front row thinking, okay, maybe they got this uh, universe thing wrong and maybe they got the earth thing wrong, okay? But uh, there's got to be some sort of logical reason why these guys are so far off, okay? There has to be, okay? Well, again, uh, let's take a look at some logic and uh, you tell me if they're even gonna succumb to that. I don't think so. But let's take a look at some logical things that we see on planet Earth. And uh, let's see if we've really been here for millions and billions of years, okay? Not just the Earth itself. But how about the history of man? The written history of man dates only back to about roughly 5,000 years. Well, stop and think about it. If man's been here for millions of years, why don't we have more records of man's existence? Somewhere? Anywhere? Interesting. Uh, how about the writing of man? The oldest writing of man is about, again, roughly 5,000 years. So the question, if, if man's been here for millions of years, why don't we have older evidence of writing? Oh, and by the way, when a writing does appear, it's fully formed in intel it's intelligent. It's not some ape that accidentally bumped up a piece of clay. Oh, 
hey, look at the letter A. I've struck upon something. But it's a complete alphabet, fully intelligible. It's not a learning process. It's fully formed, fully developed. Think about that. Okay, why is that? Uh, the population of man, this is important, starting with eight people, you know, the survivors of the flood, because God did a restart with the population according to the Bible, and apply modern growth rate since the flood of Noah's day, we should have a total human population of around 6 billion people. <gasps> hey, guess what we have? About 6 billion people, roughly. However, in evolutionary time scale, you run into some serious problems. Starting with just one couple, just 41,000 years ago, will give us a total population of 2 to 10 to the 89th power. Now again, that's so huge that the, the number of people that is would be so great there would not be enough space in the universe to hold that many bodies. How many of you guys would say that's seriously crowded? Right, I'll stick to the traffic here in Vegas. Okay, it's crazy, folks. There's no way we can have been around for that long. And again, by the way, that does calculate, you know, natural disasters, disease, and all that stuff too, and it still comes up with that number. There's no way that we could be there that long. Okay, how about the age of the Sahara? The Sahara Desert is expanding, has been calculated to be about roughly 4,000 years ago, which happens to be roughly around after the flood, right, is when you would expect that to start. How many guys would say that you're probably not going to have any deserts during the flood? You guys are awesome tonight. This is great. If I had enough gum, I'd give it to you all, but I don't. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> right? So therefore, it had to start sometime after the flood, 4,400 years or so ago. So, and that's what we see. Hey, wow, that's interesting. All right? Question, if the earth is really billions of years old, why isn't the Sahara Desert larger than it is? Why isn't it all the way through Africa by now? Billions. I'm not talking about these billions. Why isn't uh, half the earth covered in desert by now? Very interesting. How about the age of coral? Oldest known coral reef formation is about 4,200 years old, which again is about the time of Noah's flood. But if the earth was really billions of years old, why aren't coral reefs older than 4,200 years? Now you'll have some folks out there that say, oh no, coral reef is proof that we've been here for millions of years because we all know that it takes millions of years. Don't touch that. Coral reef. It takes, no. Folks, this is easily demonstrated. They've demonstrated now that coral reef grows very rapidly. It doesn't take millions of years for that stuff to form. That's another lie, okay? And then Lord willing, we'll get into another lie. How many guys have heard this one? You ever go on those cave tours and they tell you that the planet will blow up, the IRS will come after you and they will sick the US military on you if you dare touch that stalactite. Have you heard that? The guy's there, ah, the Antichrist will pop out a hole and suck you into, you know, but they warn you, don't touch it. Why? Because what do they say? It takes millions of years. A lie. Did you know they can form in a very, yeah, well, I'm ahead of myself. In a couple of weeks, we'll get to that. Evidence is that stalactites and stalactites can form very rapidly. But same thing with coral reef, okay? But let's move on. How about the age of trees? The oldest known tree is the bristlecone pine tree, about roughly 4,300 years. Uh, although I see, I saw some others in research this week. Some would say a little bit lower, 39, 50, something like that. But around 4,300 years, which again is about the time of Noah's flood, right? Okay, when they started to grow again. But wait a second, if the earth is billions of years old, why aren't there any trees older than 4,300 years? At least one for a million. Because we haven't been here for millions. They said 4.54 billion. Why is that? Okay. Now, there are some that say, oh, no, you, you creationists, you Christians, you got it wrong. Uh, they've done some new dating uh, uh, tests on these bristlecone pine trees, and they're about 8,000 years old. Well, first of all, stop and think about that. Even if that's true, that's not millions of years old. It's still within thousands. Okay, but second of all, uh, they make a classical error. They make some faulty assumptions, okay? And they assume that each tree ring represents exactly one year. That's not true. That's the faulty assumption. It's now known, folks, that various stresses like insects, earthquakes, weather, release of gas can cause ring disturbances, giving the appearance that it's older when it's not. So you can't rely upon just it's got the 8,000 rings, so it must be 8,000 years. That's not true. That's a faulty assumption. In fact, folks, they make the same faulty assumption when it comes to ice core samples. Many times they'll say, oh, you Christians are wrong. We haven't been here for 6,000 years because we've drilled deep down into the ice. And when we pull those ice core samples up, we see all these rings. And if you count up the rings, we've been here for tens of thousands of years. Well, you're making a faulty assumption. You're assuming that each one of those rings represents one year, and it doesn't, like this guy shows. Let's take a look. I was preaching in Denver one time, and some guys came and they said, Hovind, we know you teach the earth is only 6,000 years old. Uh, we'd like to prove to you you're wrong. Would you come with us, please? I said, sure. They took me to this big freezer in Denver, outside of Denver in Lakewood. It's the National Ice Core Laboratory. 
36 below zero in there. They put this big suit on me, big hat, big gloves, big boots. I was freezing in five seconds when I walked in there. I got Florida blood, you know, it's real thin. They said, Hovind, we go to Greenland and we drill holes through the ice. You know, government job. And we take this big pipe, we drill it down in, and we bring this ice core out of the middle of the pipe, and we save it in this big freezer here in Lakewood, Colorado. We have 10 ice cores stored in this freezer. They said, they, should, they took me over and showed me one of the ice cores. They said, you see these rings on here? It looks like tree rings, dark, light, dark, light. I said, oh yeah, it's real clear. They said, well, what happens in the summer, the snow melts a little bit, and then it refreezes and makes clear ice. It shows up dark on the picture. In the winter, the snow just packs. It doesn't get a chance to melt. And so it shows up as a white layer. So these layers represent summer, winter, summer, winter, summer, winter, summer, winter. They said, now the deepest hole we've ever drilled is 10,000 feet deep. And we counted these ice rings, and there were 135,000 of them. And now you're going around telling everybody the earth is 6,000 years old. We can prove it's at least 135,000. I said, fellas, aren't you assuming those are annual rings? See, they didn't know about the lost squadron, apparently. But in World War II, some airplanes ran out of gas and landed in Greenland. Has anybody ever heard of the Lost Squadron? Okay, it's been on TV a bunch of time. Well, the airplanes got left there in 1942. They went on and fought the war. Everybody forgot about them until a rich millionaire from Kentucky got a brilliant idea. Go find those airplanes and bring them home. He went there looking for the airplanes. They had to use ground-penetrating radar to penetrate the ice, and they located the planes. They melted a hole to get down to a P-38. It was 263 feet below the surface. They melted this hole down to get to the plane, took the plane apart, and brought the pieces back up through the hole and put it back together in Middleboro, Kentucky, not too far from here. How far is Middleboro from Knoxville? About two hours, maybe? Okay. The planes, that's where its home base is, Middleboro. Well, the planes were in the ice for 48 years. They were 263 feet down. That's uh, five and a half feet a year. Now, the deepest hole they've ever drilled is 10,000 feet. You divide that by five and a half, you get 1,800 years. I know deeper layers get squished, called glacial fern, so really 4,000 years is plenty of time to put all the ice at the North and South Pole. So why isn't there more ice at the North and South Pole? Mm -hmm. I visited the museum and saw the guy who dug out the airplane. His name is Bob Carden. I said, Bob, <clears throat> when you went down to get to that airplane, did you, melt through, did you go through ice rings? He said, oh yeah, many hundreds of them. I said, now wait a minute, how can there be hundreds of ice rings in 48 years? Shouldn't there be somewhere around 48? He said, who told you those are annual layers? He said, that doesn't represent summer, winter, summer, winter. It represents warm, cold, warm, cold, warm, cold. You can get five of those in one week in Knoxville, can't you? Yeah. But here's a guy still calling them annual layers. Now, either he's ignorant or he's lying. Hmm. Or he's just not using logic. Or he just doesn't want to admit that, yeah, folks, we haven't been here for millions and billions of years, and you can't use that evidence. It doesn't fly in the face of science. But if you use logic and you look at the age of the Bible, the Bible records for us a creation date of approximately 6,000 years ago. Okay, as we've seen the scientific facts and the logic point us towards the same dates, right? Not just the Bible, but even the scientific data. So could it be that the Bible is right after all? Wouldn't that be logical? Okay, and again, that's the problem, okay? And uh, once again, folks, you got to keep in mind, this is the Achilles heel of evolution, okay? They have to have these millions and billions of years. And that's why I would say this guy continues to teach that even though we know it's not true. Those are not annual rings because he knows logically if he were to buy into that, then the whole thing overnight, his theory is destroyed. I'm telling you, I say it again. They have to have millions and billions of years in order for their fairy tale to work. So anytime you come across anything that demonstrates even logically, even scientifically, it's not true, walk away from it. Don't share it, cover it up, hide it away, or just ignore it. And that's what they're doing, okay? But again, you might be thinking, okay, well, maybe they got the universe wrong, they got the earth wrong, and apparently they're turned away from just common sense logic. Okay, when you take a look at some facts on the earth, but if it really was that obvious that we have a young earth, uh, Joey, you would think that uh, some of these guys would be at least intellectually honest enough to admit it once in a while, right? 
Well, believe it or not, there are a few of them that admit, folks, that uh, believe it or not, even scientifically, yeah, you can trust the Bible. And not just the Bible, what it says, but even what the Bible says, how long we've been here, okay? Listen to a couple of these quotes here from scientists, okay? Uh, uh, John Eddy, he's a PhD solar astronomer at the High Altitude Observatory in Boulder, Colorado. Here's what he said. There is what? No evidence based solely on solar observation that the sun is 4.5 billion years old. How much evidence? None. This is what he's saying. I'm not saying this, and he works at the observatory. He's a scientist. Okay, listen. He said, given some new and unexpected results, to the contrary, okay, I suspect, listen to what he says. I suspect we could live with Bishop Usher's value for the age of the earth and sun about how long? Interesting, a scientist. He says, I don't think we have much in the way of observational evidence and astronomy to conflict with that. In other words, it's not just that the Bible says it, but when you deal with the scientific data, there's no conflict. This is how much of a cover-up that's going on, folks. And I'm telling you, they have to, this one they guard like a vengeance. Because they know if, they, if it ever gets out that we haven't been here for millions and millions of years, the whole thing falls flat on its face. Okay. In fact, this guy said this, Professor whoever uh, from Biological Society of Strasbourg, pronounce his name if you'd like, uh, here's what he said. Listen to this, direct quote. Evolution is what? I love it. A fairy tale for grown-ups. This theory has helped nothing in the progress of science. It is what? Useless. Okay? And folks, I'm glad that he used that word. He said it. I didn't. The scientist, it's a fairy tale for grown-ups because that's exactly what it would take for you and I to fall for this lie. Millions of years ago in a land far, far away. Something mystical, something magical. A fairy tale came true, and Bobby did create a little brother out of the garage with a firecracker and an apple. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that great? It's called a fairy tale, okay? But again, you might be thinking, well, okay, maybe they got the universe wrong. They got the uh, uh, earth thing wrong. They're not using logic. And yeah, a few of them have come out on record saying that there's no reason to doubt the scripture. There's no conflict scientifically here, even with this dating thing. But uh, what about... What about all those dating methods that they throw out at us and say, oh yeah, we know we've been here for millions and billions of years because of a carbon dating. I mean, you guys heard that one. Or radiometric dating. Well, Lord willing, you don't want to miss next week because now we're going to start examining that. Carbon dating. In fact, if you take a look at the process of carbon dating, believe it or not, this is how twisted it is. Carbon dating, looking at the methodology and what it needs, actually proves that the earth has not been here for millions of years. Did you know that? They won't tell you that. They just use it to promote their lie. But we'll get to that, Lord willing, next week. Let's pray. Well, hi, this is Pastor Billy Crone of Sunrise Baptist Church and Get a Life Ministries, and I hope you enjoyed today's study. But in closing, before you go, let me ask you one final question. If you were to die today, are you sure that you go to heaven and not hell? You see, here's the problem. The Bible says that nobody automatically gets to go to heaven, and that's because God is holy and we are not. The Bible says that the wages of our sin or our unholiness, or the wrong things that we have done, have separated us from God. And the wages of our sin, or unholiness, uh, means that we deserve to die and receive God's judgment to go to hell and not heaven. In other words, we're disqualified for heaven. And that's because God being holy and us being not, the two cannot mix. So what are we going to do? Well, that's bad enough. The other problem is we don't even want to admit this dilemma even though God already knows it all. And so out of love, God gave us something called the Ten Commandments to show us that we're really disqualified for heaven. We're not holy, we're not perfect like him. Uh, let's take a, a look at just a few of those uh, here today. Uh, the Bible says, the Ten Commandments says, you shall not bear false witness. That means lying. How many of you have ever told a lie before? Well, those of you who didn't raise your hand, you just did. Okay, let's be honest, folks. Let's not tell another lie. We've all lied. Well, believe it or not, that disqualifies you for heaven. That's how holy God is. He is the truth. He does not lie. And so that makes us a liar. Another of the Ten Commandments says you shall not steal. Okay? How many have ever taken anything without permission? Well, all of our hands should have went up at that one. Uh, we've already said we're a bunch of liars. Okay? Well, we've all done that. And it doesn't have to be a bank. Uh, it could be a pencil in the third grade. Uh, that means that we're a thief. Okay? The Bible says that God is so holy, even his name is holy. And that's why one of the Ten Commandments says, you shall not use the Lord's name in vain. 
Hey, folks, isn't it ironic how uh, now the blessed name of Jesus Christ, the Bible says there's no other name under heaven by which men might be saved, Jesus Christ, has now become a cuss word? Folks, the Bible says that's the sin of blasphemy, okay? And folks, let's be honest. We've used God's name in vain uh, before. The Bible also says in the Ten Commandments, you shall not commit adultery. And Jesus takes the standard even higher. He says, listen, it's not just physical adultery. He says, surely I tell you that if you look at another person with lust in your eye, you've committed adultery in your heart. God looks at the heart. One more out of the Ten Commandments says, you shall not murder. And you might say, well, hey, I haven't done that one. Really? The Bible says that the sin of hatred is akin to the sin of murder. You, in other words, in your heart, wish they were dead. You pulled the trigger, if you will, in your own heart. And the Bible says God sees that, and it's just as bad. He knows the mind. He knows the heart, the thoughts, and the intents that we have. Folks, that's just five out of the Ten Commandments. How are you doing? Not very well. None of us can keep them. They're God's x-ray to show us that we're disqualified. And so when, not if, your time comes, because we're all marching towards the grave at different speeds, you're going to have to stand before God. And you're going to have to uh, say who you really are. He already knows. Hey, God, let me into heaven. Uh, I'm, I'm a liar. I'm a thief. I'm a blasphemer, adulterer, and a murderer. Folks, the Bible is clear. Such people as these will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. That's the problem. Here's the good news. God so loved the world that he sent his one and only begotten son, Jesus Christ, that whoever believes in him, what he did on the cross, on our behalf, that we will not perish, we will not go to hell, but he will give us the gift of eternal life. Jesus died on the cross to forgive us of all of our sins. It's something that we don't earn. We, we, we can't earn. It's a gift, the Bible calls it. And a gift cannot be earned. He was taking the death penalty in our place. That's what the cross was of the day. And that if we would just ask Jesus Christ to forgive us of our sins and believe that in our heart that God raised him from the grave, showing that his death is satisfactory to God to forgive us of all of our sins, no matter what we've done, the Bible says we shall be saved. Uh, the Apostle Paul says that if we confess with our mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in our heart that God raised him from the grave, we will be saved. Let me give you a common analogy of what God's doing and what he did for us with Jesus dying on the cross on our behalf. Uh, in life, we know that people uh, can be sentenced for a crime uh, to where they're actually on death row. Uh, the courtroom scene has completely finished. The gavel has already sounded. Uh, they are going to jail and they're just awaiting their time before they go to the death penalty. Uh, as they're sitting there in the jail cell, uh, it, it's a proven fact they did what they did. Everybody knows it. They're just waiting for that time for their uh, number to come up, so to speak, and walk down that hall and be executed. Uh, there's nothing they could do to reverse their crime. No amount of good works in that jail cell can reverse what they've done. It's too late. It's over. But believe it or not, there's one way that people even today can get off a death row. And that's if the one in authority, the governor, if he were to, out of mercy and kindness, nothing that the person did, because they don't earn it and they don't deserve it, and they can't earn it, if he would grant them what's called a pardon, out of the kindness of his heart, he has the authority to grant them a pardon and absolve them completely of their crimes uh, against the state. And did you know that there's actually been people that this has happened to, that the governor, out of mercy, has granted them a pardon as a gift, and they've gone down to the jail cell, and handed that person, extended it through the bars, here, I'm granting you a pardon. If you would just receive it, you can go free right now. And did you know that there's actually been people who've said, no, I don't want your pardon. And so what happened is of their own doing, even though they had a way out, they still had to go to the death penalty. Folks, can I tell you something? That's what God did for us with Jesus dying on the cross. He sent his son to take the death penalty in our place. He, God, has the authority to grant us through Jesus a complete pardon. And every day that you're still alive, God is extending to you spiritually this pardon. But a pardon does you no good unless you reach out and receive it by faith. Won't you do that today? Won't you call upon the name of Jesus Christ? Ask him, to forgive you of all of your sins, to 
Trust in his work on the cross to pardon us from all of our crimes, our sins against God. God loves you. He wants a relationship with you. But there's only one way to heaven. It's Jesus. There's only one way to get off a death row. It's through the cross of Jesus Christ. Won't you do that right now? Well, this has been Pastor Billy Crone of Sunrise Baptist Church and, and Get a Life Ministries. And if there's anything that we can do for you, uh, please don't hesitate uh, to contact us. Uh, our number, our information will uh, come up here on the screen shortly. And uh, uh, if there's anything we could do for you, please don't hesitate to let us know. Uh, thank you for uh, joining us. And uh, remember, I hope to see you in heaven. God bless. Thank you for watching this presentation from Sunrise Baptist Church. If you would like to send us a letter or any other kind of postage, you can reach us at 1780 Betty Lane, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89156. For more information, you can give us a call at 702-452-8599 or email us at bcrone at getalifemedia.com or you can visit our website at www.getalifemedia.com. Billy Crone and this ministry can also be found on Facebook and Twitter. Join us for services at www.sunriselv.com.